WABC Mendel, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yes, Michael, I've tried many times to talk to you about the end times from Jewish sources. And when you t today use Christian sources, when the Jewish people are already hated all over the globe, just to inflame uh, our, our enemies against us, it really whoa, is... Whoa, 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 stop getting hysterical. What are you talking about? When you start talking about the Sanhedrin that was responsible for the crucifixion of, of, of uh, the, the Nazarene, you, uh, don't you realize as a Jew how sensitive that issue is to us? Where All right, so let, let's talk about it without getting hysterical. Who was it who tried Jesus? That's irrelevant. The point is that... Well, well, why is it irrelevant? You're raising an issue. You're saying I'm committing a crime by talking about the truth. So let's talk about the truth. Since you're a Hebrew truth-sayer, tell me the truth. Who tried Jesus? The point is, even if he did exist, which is a controversial sub subject on, on its own... But oh, wait a minute. Even if he did exist, you mean... Now you sound like those who say that even if God existed... At all because, uh, well, I mean, not at all. Why? Because you're Jewish, so therefore Jesus doesn't exist? Do you realize how insulting that is to Christians? No, let's, let's, let's set the record straight. No, no, let's set the record straight. You called me up and said it's offensive of me to say that the Sanhedrin tried Jesus. Let's start with the historic fact. That is a fact. That only makes Christians hate us more when we're already hated enough in France and in, and in England. Oh, that makes other... Christians hate you more. What? Why does it make why does it make Christians hate you more when the exact opposite is the point I was making? I was saying to you that a minority of the Jewish judges said Jesus was innocent. Didn't you hear that part of it? The, the, whether he was innocent or guilty to bring up something which has been uh, you, you know, let's let's blow the lid off this nonsense, Mendel. You live in your own world. You live in the world of the Bible, the Talmud, the five books of Moses and uh, the, the Torah and the Talmud, and I respect that. But is it not true that your children are not allowed to learn science? Not at all. My children... Is it not true that your children are not allowed to learn certain facts of history because it violates their belief system? My children have a secular education up to the 8th grade, and my daughters up to the 12th grade. So you... Oh, wait, and wait, and what happens after the 12th grade? 12th grade, they went to seminary. All my daughters, three of them... All right. All right. That's well and good. That is your choice. But does that mean that knowledge ends with your daughters? No. And my sons went to have an education, one of them up to 12th grade and one of them up to the 8th grade, and then went right on to seminary themselves. That's fine. So you're raising a, 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 a children who are religious, but does that mean that they have perfect knowledge of the whole world? No. It means that when they have Torah... Torah is perfect knowledge of the whole world because... It yeah, I understand that's what you believe, but it's not true to most of the world. And most of the world right now is living with barbarians who would slaughter you and your daughters. And we need to wake the world up to what's actually going on. Let's talk about what's going on in terms of Jewish sources. Number one, we're in what's called the fifth exile. The, the last one is that of the Ishmaelim, the one we're going through right now. It's All right, stop with the Ishmaelim already. Please don't bring up Yonah Shimmel to me. Talk in English. What is your main point? The Ishmaelites, the Muslims, the Arabs. It's talked about in Jewish sources that they're going to make wars all over the world. That this that they uh, make the only religion that makes slaughtering innocent human beings a sacrament. The Torah says that Yishmael is going to be a wild ass of a man. That all right, hold on a minute. And how do you fight this evil? These barbarians. How do you fight them with the Torah or with a bomb? You have to eradicate them the same way you have to eradicate the Amalekites. Well, hold on. Well, you have to eradicate them, okay? And how do you eradicate them? The commandment to... I asked you, how do you eradicate them? I ask you a simple question. Let's come out of the yeshiva for two minutes. How do you eradicate this evil? You bomb them to smithereens. Okay, maybe you bomb them to smithereens or I bomb them? No, no I don't bomb them. The American military bombs them, 99% of whom are Christians. Your question, if there was a war... But... No, you, you, do you hear what I just said to you? 99% of the U.S. military are Christians. Take a look at the graves around America, the military graves. They have crosses on them. Do you know why? Because they believed in something. They believed in their religion. When they died, they were given the last rites, Christian rites they were given. Don't you think that we should respect that as well? Michael, why do you always have to so cite the Why do you always have to denigrate people other than Jewish people? Why? Why do you have to do that to make your point and tell us how holy you are? My point is that you are bringing more anti-Semitism on us. Ah, oh, don't give me that garbage. Don't make me jump to your tune. I'm not going to fall for it. Let me tell you about the I'm not going to fall for this. 
I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of your holy rolling because if you really want to get into it, I'll dig even more deeply into your, your whole scene. You want to go into it? Go ahead. You want to go into your scene and how holy you really are? Well, Let's go into how holy you really are. Are you still there, uh, Mendel? I'm here. Tell us how holy we are. Okay. What percentage of ultra-religious people in your sect are on welfare? What does that mean that you're unholy? If they need it, they need it. Oh, oh, they need it. Well, because I happen to oppose welfare. I find it a, a leech that takes welfare. It makes me sick. I grew up in a poor home. Nobody, I knew people, my people would rather throw themselves off a fire escape than accept public assistance. In this case, we have people who are discriminated against. They can't get jobs because they look like uh, Hasidim with long... Oh, uh, here we go again. Okay, you see, you've got all the answers, don't you, Mendel? you got all the answers, but your number one answer is whenever anyone says anything that you don't like, you scream anti-Semitism. You're, the, you're your worst, worst enemy, Mendel. Not at all. With those pe the people that are holy have children sometimes in, in five or six, seven, even ten or more children doing what God uh, blessed them to do. With all right, so they should work at the same time as doing God's work. You yeah. can do both. In fact, I read the, the Talmud. It says a man should have a profession or a trade. And study the Torah. Didn't say she'd sit and collect welfare and study the Torah. Where does it say that? It, 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 this is the most generous, kind country in the entire world. And all oh, but wait, but you deny that the religion exists of this generous, kind nation. No, I didn't deny you said it. even if it exists, you, you deny its existence. You say that the kind people don't even have a religion. Got enough already. Oh, stay on the line. I'll be back.